so let's data connection re-established all right so let's um, resume from where we left off uh, we were talking about charts right what was the first aspect of a chart uh, what type of chart are we talking about right now time series uh, uh, data chart okay so always be particular about these things because normally what happens is if you're not learning in a rigorous way uh, one of the problems with a lot of the material that is available on the web and all that the reason I tell you only to go to certified sites is they are not very particular about uh, you know covering the whole domain so when you're covering looking at charts you should be aware that this chart is it's it's a time series data chart so which means that tells you immediately that there are other types of charts which are cross-sectional data charts so you, it's always important to have that uh, perspective okay so what was the first thing we looked at uh, with, on, on uh, with respect to charts um, almost at the end does anyone remember what was the first thing we looked at first aspect Data range. data range right so the first aspect is the data range okay we'll just quickly go through the different aspects of the chart charts are actually above in the planning right so data connection re-established right so the first thing that we were looking at is the data range okay the start date to end date so that's the first thing you have to be aware of the second is also that sometimes people miss out on this uh, it's because it's kind of obvious uh, and in this case uh, when I write markets actually I should write uh, when I write market I should actually write markets because remember how did we define a time series data chart how did we define time series data, the nature of time series data? Vashali, why don't we sit on the first bench, there's space here. You sit between Bharat and I think so that the two bodies can't sit together. So you, you separate Bharat and uh, Saloni. Okay, all right. So, um, okay. So, uh, data range is start date to end date. The second aspect is uh, market. But remember, so I, I'm actually changing my writing a little bit. I, instead of writing market, I'm now writing markets. Why am I doing this? Remember, what was the definition of time series data? Does anyone remember? Use the mic. Yeah. Use the mic. Yeah. To plot at least one variable. Yeah. And uh, there should be two observations recorded. Yeah. At least. At Again, least. you're missing those words. Yes, okay. So there's two. At least two. So the at least one means you could have ten variables as well. Yes. Okay. So that's why it's important to say and ten variables in this case means in this particular discussion the micro aspect of this that is it could be 10 markets okay so like I was saying here that here I plotted euro USD but I could all start I should also start comparing this to other markets I could compare this to let's say any other market most common market for comparison would be the which which currency is this Swiss franc okay these are uh, all right, there you can see the uh, dollar Swiss versus the, uh, the euro. Okay, so this will not make sense because of the picture. Because in the dollar Swiss, what is the base currency? In dollar Swiss, what is the base currency? Dollar Swiss and dollar. Ha, in dollar Swiss, it's dollar, right? And in the case of the euro dollar, euro dollar FX, euro is the base currency. Okay, so that's why it looks funny because the euro is up 0.6. And this is down one and a half because the uh, calculator, the system doesn't understand all that. Okay, the system just plots the variable. Okay, blindly. This is what computers do, right? That's why we say garbage in, garbage out, because the computer doesn't really uh, have uh, you know the sense of a human being. Okay, so that's why I said that the correct definition here should be for the second aspect of a chart. The correct as uh, correct. Um, uh, word should be markets okay market in bracket s so markets so you, you, this is basically acknowledging the fact that you could be plotting multiple markets or multiple variables okay you can have as many as you want and it will still be time series data okay so we are almost there so we might as well pause this here now you can see that whoever comes now will All right, so we go back to the aspects of a chart. All right, so second aspect is market or variable being plotted. 
Okay, this, these are all the aspects of a chart that you should note. As soon as you see a chart, you should start looking for all these aspects and you should understand for yourself uh, what are these, uh, you know, what are the values, like what market is being plotted. Okay, if it's Euro, then it's Euro dollar effects. Also remember always, uh, I might have told you this before, whenever you're plotting, the, you're referring to the Euro dollar, we can remove this reference now, actually. Uh, whenever you're referring to the Euro dollar, always use when you're referring to the euro dollar exchange rate okay always use the expression euro dollar fx okay uh, because you if you just say euro dollar there are some interest rate contracts there's actually a type of deposit which you have probably haven't learned have you learned about euro dollar deposits uh, euro currency markets okay so there are certain types of markets where you have uh, euro currency markets okay euro markets so therefore if you just say euro dollars you might confuse people because they may not be sure as to whether you're referring to euro dollar deposits and then there's also a very famous and very well uh, very actively traded uh, euro dollar interest rate futures contract on the on the cme okay very very actively traded uh, futures contract so there could be all kinds of confusion so to avoid that confusion therefore whenever you're referring to the euro dollar exchange rate you should always use the expression euro dollar fx this uh, so you know so, so even uh, and anything remote related to the euro even if you're talking about the euro sterling exchange rate that's also an exchange rate you know that's pretty active right now okay if you look at euro sterling it's very active right now because of the why is euro sterling active do you think what could be a fundamental reason now we are talking you have some idea of fundamentals yes you have some idea about fundamentals okay so uh, why what for what fundamental reason might uh, euro dollar be very active right now you can see how sharply it's moving okay uh, can anyone think of this very obvious reason why uh, the euro dollar exchange rate is moving around quite rapidly yeah you won't get attendance but it's not your choice you won't attend okay anybody has any idea nobody for what fundamental reason might euro dollar uh, uh, euro sterling sorry i i don't know what i was saying was i saying euro dollar yes sir. okay sorry sorry what i meant is euro sterling i'm very sorry okay because i'm calling up the euro sterling exchange rate you see see how sharply it started to move off late especially okay why do you think this is happening any idea why the euro dollar euro the euro sterling exchange rate is very volatile right now any idea yes brexit. So brexit. brexit okay so brexit on all the uncertainty around brexit now you have a new british prime minister yeah. who is likely to push for a new new no deal brexit okay and that is seen by the market as at least in the short term it's negative for the uk so they're selling the sterling and buying euros okay so in euro sterling what is the base currency euros. euros okay so when so this is the other part that we'll come to when we look at charts so then obviously you know immediately when i show you this chart you notice the first thing you notice is you notice the data range okay this is from about september 2012 and you notice that which market has been plotted this is the euro sterling so even when you're talking about euro sterling the exchange rate you should say euro sterling fx because you could also be referring to euro sterling deposits that is euro market deposits in sterling okay would be called euro sterling deposits okay so therefore to avoid confusion with that so you should just be aware that even if you don't understand euro deposit markets you should be aware that there is such a thing called a euro deposit market so therefore whenever you're talking about any exchange rate uh, connected to the euro euro sterling okay euro dollar euro aussie okay all these things therefore uh, you should always mention uh, add the suffix fx is everyone clear you don't seem very convinced kushbu i'm just saying it's suppose there is uh, suppose there are two uh, students called kushbu okay so then if there is kushbu sharma and then kushbu saxena then if i just say kushbu then people are not clear who i'm referring to right so therefore i have to say kushbu sharma so similarly because you could have uh, when you just say euro sterling you could be referring to the euro sterling deposit market okay so euro market deposits in sterling are referred to as euro sterling deposits so because you could have that confusion therefore whenever you are referring to any exchange rate connected to the euro you should develop this practice uh, of always adding the suffix fx that tells the person who's listening to you that you are referring to the euro sterling exchange rate there is no chance that you are referring to euro sterling deposits or if you say euro dollar there's no chance if you say when you say euro dollar effects there's no chance that you're referring to the euro dollar futures contract on the cme okay is that is that simple as that right 
Is this clear to everyone? Okay, just something you have to remember. Okay, so that's the second part. And what's the third? Okay, it's in the same uh, window. Okay, all right. So data range, markets, plot type. We had basically, I think, started on plot type the other day. All right, the plot type. Now there are many, many types of plots possible. And we start with the most simple uh, plot type possible. We've already shown you this before, but we'll just run through it once again. That is the line chart, okay? So you just plot, plot one dot. And usually when you take the line chart, you take the closing value for the period, okay? So we actually, uh, going ahead of the next one which is the granularity okay but uh, so line chart basically just understand this a little superficially at this point of time so the plot type is in this case one simple plot, uh, the simplest plot type which you guys are all aware of is the line chart this is clear okay so this plot this chart is being plot, plotted for any any period so in this case the period is daily which means when you see this kind of a chart you notice the the, the period is day okay one day which means every day we look at the closing value of euro sterling effect okay and we plot it okay we put a dot okay and every day we do this and then we join all the dots and that's how you get this line is this clear okay the simplest kind of plot where you capture the minimum information which is one value you could technically plot a line chart even for high or the low or the close or you could also plot it for high or low or open okay but normally when we plot line charts we plot the closing value okay so if you look at a system right if you're looking at a system and the question it is very pretty pretty i mean it's, it's basically guaranteed that this system has been programmed to uh, although it doesn't tell you anything but when you're reading this what are you reading actually here this 85 11 can you guys see that yes, 85 11 the cursor value right on top here this 85 over here that 85 11 whatever we saw 83 82 right now that stuff is the closing but the system doesn't really tell you this but by default you should understand that all charting systems will typically take the closing value of the period so you're looking at a daily chart and it's got a it's a line chart so the que if the question arises in your mind is this the high of the day or the low of the day or the opening price of the day that is being plotted no the answer is by default the system most programs would be written to ensure that the closing price of the day has been taken because a day is a long period of time and you know the foreign exchange market trades all the way from wellington to new york okay from 24 uh, uh, from monday to friday it basically never stops okay so it's the closing price which means it's the new york closing price okay so the last major market is new york okay so it will take the new york closing price so around 5 pm new york time okay so this is the price at 5 pm new york time that's been that's what's being plotted this is clear so close is generally taken as a default value for line charts the default uh, figure so but you could technically also plot a line chart for the opening price if the system gives you that flexibility if the system is programmed in such a way to give you that flexibility this theoretically it's possible okay all right okay so we take care of this the day uh, the line chart is the most example uh, uh, is the most uh, sim is the simplest chart now as you can see here already there are many different types of char charts that are possible okay you can already see here if you go here you're supposed to have a login on this particular charting application you can go here and just look at the various types of charts that are possible we don't have time to go through all these charts but i'll just tell you the important ones in in financial markets are basically the line chart okay the bar chart now the bar chart can be of two types now these guys haven't given you the second option on the bar chart okay if you look at oanda we'll, we'll, we'll look at uh, i'll just write it in the bar in the case of the bar chart so the next example is a bar chart now do you notice here something here let's see if we take okay well let's just plot this here and really zoom out and then try to see how much here um can you see that there are two let's just focus on this okay let's just focus on this period okay can you see this yes, sir. 29 july okay do you notice that there are two um, sort of ticks to the side okay there's one over here okay and then there's one here to the left yes. okay so this is a particular type of bar chart which is called this is actually one step ahead we should have ideally gone to that type of bar chart which is only uh, which has only this stick to the right and not this so just imagine that for a while okay imagine that we have simply a bar chart which is just the bar which is this and then there's a tick to the right okay imagine that okay forget about this for a while then that's the next level of com uh, you know complication from the uh, line chart the line chart is very simple you're capturing only the closing price <coughs> then the next level is 
the bar chart okay which is called the high low close bar chart so technically bar charts are of uh, if you're looking at chart types okay bar charts and bar charts will be of two types because the bar chart is quite important so we'll just cover it a little bit bar charts um, one type of bar chart is the I'm just gonna write HLC okay what does HLC stand for high low and close okay and so that is the first type of bar chart the simpler type of bar chart and then the other type of bar chart that is possible is what we what will be the other type anybody has any idea opening, opening and closing low high averages no so the other type of uh, thing is we just add the opening price to the HLC bar so you see how we are going step by step okay in the case of the line chart we just have the closing price typically but always remember that this is just the default way of showing the line chart okay uh, line chart is only C okay but always remember when we say only C this is just the convention theoretically there's nothing to stop you from plotting the opening price through a line chart okay but normally people don't do that so we start with the simplest type of chart with the line chart with only the closing price typically then we go a little bit we capture a little bit more information per period we start capturing the high low close okay we call that the high low close bar chart so if you look at a system like oanda for instance that oanda fx trade system which i was showing you earlier sometimes okay which has a black background so that system gives you the option of so it depends on the charting system involved in this kind of this particular charting system they haven't given you the option okay uh, they have only given you the open high low close bar option they haven't given you a high low close bar option if I see it here yeah they don't have that option here okay but it depends it go I mean it depends on the charting system that you're looking at okay so this is one of the ways you would judge charting systems how good is the charting system what are the various types of charts that it offers you okay because when you go into industry people will come and try to sell you charting software and other chart of trading software risk management software so you should have the ability to evaluate the quality of the software okay so simply we start a simplest uh, plot line chart we start from there we increase the capture of information we, we increase the types of uh, variables that we capture now we start capturing the high low and the close per period then we plot that and that's what looks like this forget about this little tick to the left now imagine it does not exist okay now we just plot this is your high low close bar chart so you have a high, you have a bar this uh, you know the length of the bar and then you have the tick to the right which is the closing price okay so in this bar what we have is let's make it even more uh, yeah so in this bar what we have what is this the low price or the high price high. high price okay and this is the low price okay so as you can see the length of the bars are not the same okay because obviously the market activity is not the same it's not like a static thing every day okay some days the market doesn't move much some days it moves a lot okay so you can see on this day it moved a lot relative to this day so this gives you the the height of the bar basically gives you the sense of how much the market has moved during the day okay because it gives you the distance between the high and the low all right okay so it plots the high price and the low price and then to the right this tick here this plots the closing price okay so you can see here that the market is very strong it opened and uh, closed near the high all right so this is one of the things so we are just plotting the uh, types of charts at this point of time so we have this second category of chart which is the high low close bar chart now we uh, start looking at this also we no longer imagine that it doesn't exist we we say that we see that it does exist now you see this is the open this is the next level of bar chart so you're continuously adding information so now we add o open high low close this is clear okay so this is the next type of bar chart which is we now we see this bar for what it is it's got a tick to the left and it's got a tick to the right okay so this is the open so this is the opening price this is the low price this is the high price and this is the closing price this is clear so open high low close all right so you can see here when you when you mouse over you can see because this is the open high low close bar chart the so notice something that when i'm mousing over with the cursor now the system is showing me four uh four types of information for each bar 
for each period okay it's showing me four types of information when i was plotting the line chart it was showing me only one piece of information which was the closing price okay because that line chart only plots the closing price now that i've told the system to plot the ohlc bar chart okay now it's got four pieces of information for each period is this clear are you convinced everybody's clear yes may have yeah give her the mic if we can what what are you talking about candlestick no we are coming to that yeah yeah doji is a pattern okay doji is a candlestick pattern so the candlestick is the type of chart we are coming to that next okay so but you're right in the sense that the uh, ohlc the open high low close bar chart has the same information that at least the input okay not in terms of display but in terms of input the ohlc bar has the same information as the candle chart the candle will also work with these four pieces of information okay so we'll we'll look at the cat so is everyone clear about this now how we are going from one step to the we are increasing the information being captured at each uh, for each period yes give her the mic if we can yeah so we have gone here yes one minute okay i'll just uh, all right okay graph yeah so uh, my question is why the call is a high low and closing price um, because it's rising the chart is rising that's why we are going uh, calling it high low what if it uh, decreases the mm -hmm. price then what do we call it no no even if you re even from here if you look at these three charts okay if you look at these three bars in this period if you just look at this period if this becomes your data range then the uh, value of the variable is decreasing over this data range right it started here and went down right if you just look at these three bars all right so the high low in any period you have to understand in any period whether the price is actually going down or not okay and going down means you have to have some reference which means typically you are looking at the closing price as a reference going down falling means it has to be falling relative to something right you can't just look at one variable one plot and say it's falling because there's no reference point right so are you following what i'm saying i'm not able to get your question but i but what you need to understand is that for any period that you track for any period when the market trades there's always going to be a high price and always going to be a low price and a closing price and an opening price so uh, are you saying that if the market is going down we should not call it a open high low close we should call it a open low high close no we don't do that normally okay so <laughs> that is not the convention the chart type remains the same okay so we say that if the period is going down we say i mean if the, if the variable actually is declining in value over the period concerned we just say that the variable is declining right so we'll come to that reading but we don't say that that's not the convention okay all right okay so uh, so open high low close is everyone clear now okay we are tracking this information the next type of chart is the candle we are still working with the same kind of uh, information okay Okay, high low close, open high low close, two types of bars. Candle charts use the same information, open high low close, but you see that the plot is a little different. Okay, so let's look at a candle chart plot. Okay, so we will look at uh, I don't know the, the the terminology that they have used. We actually normally want to have, um, yeah, I don't know why they've called it hollow candles. All right, so essentially this. Okay. Uh, this is the way that candle charts are plotted. There'll be two colors typically used. Okay, the information is the same for each bar. You see that. Let's look at the same bar that we looked at, 29 July. The information is the same. Okay, you still see that the cursor is showing you how many pieces of information? Four pieces of information: open, high, low, and close. Okay, but here what happens is the candle chart gives you a little bit. That's why I was responding to Mehak by saying that candles include the same input as open, high, low, close bar charts. but the display is a little different okay the information is the same but the display is a little different so you could say that the candle chart is a little bit richer 
in that it uh, gives you a, a quick visual picture of what has happened in the market okay so typically most candle charts if you look at once again if you look at the oanda platform their charting system is actually quite good okay so if you look at the oanda platform you will see that in fact i have one of their uh, plots here yes what happened if we look look at now this is um, let's look at this one let's look at the monthly let's try to pop it out okay here also we might have an option to okay so we're not going to spend time doing that but normally what what happens is most of the uh, charting applications will give you an option of uh, coloring the candles differently so they'll ask you what are, in the case of an up candle okay uh, uh, what do you want as a color you can have different colors like the oanda platform if you look at you have different options of colors if you look at this chart also if you look at this uh, our um, if i just look at okay let's open a chart here all right here also you can see that uh, the candles are colored differently can you see that yes, sir. okay so this is basically meant to give you a, a quick visual picture okay uh, and uh, now you can see something here let's see what uh, yeah where is the open it's not showing the open price let's look at this let's see so the idea is that you'll always get an option in the uh, and i'm pretty sure you can actually but i don't normally use candle charts so i just use bar charts and i uh, here you can i'm pretty sure you can change the colors if you don't like these colors okay but the point is that you have different colors now why what is the importance of the different colors let's try to understand this okay so look at this candle which normally we would call a, a white candle okay so in general we would say there will be two different types of candles this kind of the light colored will call it the white candle okay and this we'll call it the dark candle okay or the black candle or the dark candle so here for instance the white candle will be the green one and the dark candle will be the red one okay so let's see what what uh, why we do that okay so let's look at something here okay okay what do you see here between the relationship in terms of the relationship between the open high and the low and the close can you see a pattern here like if you compare this what is the open here 8990 high is 9122 low is 8980 and the close is 9120 okay okay here so here notice something what is the opening price 89.90 what is the closing price all right so we can wait why we don't need to wait for that to and look at this particular one okay what is the opening price 9179 let's say okay and what in the what is the closing price 9102 okay all right now let's look at some other cases okay look at this one also what is the opening price 9226 opening price everyone can see maybe the people at the back can't see there's the font is too small you can see yes sir okay donothra you can also see okay 9226 uh, and then what is the closing price 9202 okay now let's compare it to this one because this one has a different color this one has a different color what is the opening price here 9130 let's say okay and what is the closing price 9226 okay so based on all these things that i'm going through once again look at this opening price is 9120 closing price is 9179 okay all right so based on what we have shown you so far in terms of the relationship and the colors of the candles okay that you have these uh, situation look at this once again 8990 is the opening price and the closing price is 9120 okay this is a white candle now here the opening let's go back to this red candle 24th july opening price is 8963 
okay and closing price is 89.23 this is a red candle so based on this are you able to detect a pattern yes what is the pattern who wants to tell us what the pattern is so what the, what is the i mean so based on these uh, little uh, tests that we have done okay we have just done some random uh, you know anecdotal uh, we have just connected some anecdotal evidence and we are trying to detect a pattern so based based on the patterns that we have seen if you want we can see some more patterns here this is a light candle the opening price is 9202 and the closing price is 9220 yeah okay right this is a white candle okay then uh, so based on all this that we have seen once again we can see an even tighter example of a red candle which is opening price of 9435 9135 and the closing price of 9128 okay so based on all these uh, examples that we looked at and the respective colors that have been given to the candles does anyone ten, want to tell me what the coloring rule is we will use the words white candle and dark candle yes tanya give her the mic what is your your answer should be in the form of a coloring rule which is an instruction to the system that if blah 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 then paint the candle dark if blah 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 then paint the candle white okay what is the coloring rule so if the opening is uh, lower than the uh, closing then we will paint the candle white okay and if the opening is higher than the closing then we will paint the candle dark yeah perfect okay so you can also mention it in terms of the closing price relation to the open price but whatever she has said is correct okay so this is how we paint the candles dark and light so essentially this gives you uh, partly coming to what Paul was saying about the trend of the market okay so in in this way why uh, the reason why again we have lost the internet connection I don't know why uh, but in this sense again see what is happening is the the input information into the candle chart is the same as the input into the open high low close chart okay but the candle does a better job in terms of a quick visual picture okay to tell you about whether the trend of the market is negative or uh, positive whether the closing price is lower or higher than the opening price so normally if the closing price is higher than the opening price that's a positive trend okay and uh, if the closing price is lower than the opening price that means it's a slightly negative trend so therefore it's shown as a, a dark uh, dark uh, candle okay and so this uh, positive trend is shown as a white candle is everyone clear about this yes sir. okay so basically this is the coloring rules and so you can have different colors as you can see here their coloring is different and here uh, ib's coloring is different it's interesting the data is still showing green but uh, we seem to have lost the connection okay anyway we'll continue with this okay so is everyone clear now so we have a different type of chart the candle chart okay the last type of chart we have to look at uh, is i think the only other type of chart we'll cover is um, and you have to be aware that all these different other types of charts now this i'm not covering because this you would have been already familiar from uh, your excel and all that the area chart <laughs> your excel plots and all your practice in excel you are already familiar with these area charts you know what the area chart is it's just plotting like this normally people don't use this in finance okay it's sometimes you'll see this displays in some of the charting applications but normally people don't use this okay people either use line charts or uh, bar charts or candle charts okay or point and figure so these are main types of charts that are used okay so here point and figure i'm not going to go into a great deal of detail but you should be aware that there is something called a point and figure chart okay which is uh, quite often uh, which is used by some people who are uh, technical traders okay so this is another type of chart that you should be aware of okay this is a point and figure chart it looks like this okay you will get this even on the oanda website essentially this is all knots and crosses this is like as if you're playing knots and crosses okay so you can see that when it goes up it's being plotted like this and crosses and when it is falling it is being plotted in terms of uh, knots okay or zeros okay so um, or circles essentially so this is called this type of chart you should be aware that it's called a point and figure chart okay i'm not going to spend too much time on it if you are interested in this type this chart is the main purpose of this kind of a chart is that it does a very good job of showing you the broad trend because sometimes when you look at these uh, bar charts and all it can get a little bit confusing as to what exactly is the trend okay so when you look at bar charts uh, this actually is a candle chart uh, 
uh, what have I done here now? I've, uh, I need to get this back. Yeah. Okay, so these are actually candle charts. I'm just going to bring this back. Yeah, okay. So let it be here. So sometimes when you look at, but this could also be a bar chart essentially. Okay, I can actually make it a bar chart here. So the information is the same. Let me just go back to camera. I don't know what to do in the display. Okay, all right. So sometimes you don't get a very good picture of the trend from a bar chart or a line chart. Okay, uh, because it captures too much information and there's a lot of noise. Sometimes you may not get a very good picture of the trend. So the main purpose of a point and figure chart is to give you a because the point and figure chart doesn't plot all the time. See all the other types of charts. Okay. Uh, the important thing about the point and figure chart is that uh, so I'm going to call it uh, have I written point and figure okay you should be aware of this type of chart it's an interesting chart type you can study it a little bit more if you want and on if you go back to the OANDA website okay um, if you go to the OANDA FX trade website you'll see that even on the website they have some options for doing point and figure charts okay so you can experiment with that and then you can do uh, if you set up an account there uh, but from India you will need a foreign phone number to set up an account so they don't let you set up accounts from India the FX game account in OANDA but they have some very good examples of point and figure charts where you can play around with it so the main point about the point and figure chart is basically that doesn't plot every move okay we should write doesn't necessarily plot every move only plots um, moves and reversals above defined thresholds okay so you'll understand what this means when you play around with point and figure charts on on the OANDA website okay or even here you can actually uh, this system doesn't seem to be very good because it hasn't given you an option okay of uh, uh, it doesn't do a very good job of giving you the option of defining the the trend the main point about the point and figure chart is that it gives you a picture of the broad trend because it doesn't plot every move okay so there is a defined threshold okay so it is basically typically like you would define 10 by 30 or 20 by 60 okay so if you are defining 10 uh, say let's say this is a 20 by 60 chart okay so only when the market rises by 20 pips only when then will it plot the next uh, cross okay if you look at the cross and then there has to be a 60 pip reversal okay there has to be a 60 point reversal in order to plot any of those zeros so unless if there is only a 20 point decline it will not plot the zeros the reversals so the main point you don't have to remember all this but the main point to understand is two things about that there is such a charting system called a point and figure chart and the main purpose of that charting system is to that kind of chart is to uh, show you a broad picture or give you a good idea about the broad underlying trend and it cuts out a lot of the noise because mainly because it doesn't plot every move so essentially what you're saying is don't show me all the uh, movements up and down okay every period every other chart will plot every move okay even a tiny little move will be, will be plotted okay because it just wants to be faithful to the plotting rule every period show me the open high and the low and the close even though the little different rain high and low okay so uh, but these these guys at point and figure you will tell the system that i want a 20 by 60 or a 40 by 88 uh, uh, pnf point and figure is referred to as pnf okay so uh, here so we can just write this here is so normally referred to as a pnf chart okay okay so but it's better to say point and figure but sometimes when people are saying pnf you understand that they are referring to the point and figure chart okay so the point about this is the uh, the uh, the reason that this gives you a very good understanding a very good picture of the broad trend is because it doesn't plot every move so you give the system certain parameters so the system a good charting system like if you go to the oanda website where they have point and figure charts just go and google for oanda point and figure you'll get the charting application so you can see that they'll ask you for user input 
So this 40 by 80, which I said, 40 by 80 point and figure, this is input given by me. So the system will ask you for input. There you can put in 20 or 40 or 10 or whatever. And then it'll ask you for a second input. Okay, so that is your X by Y. So 20 by 40 by 80 PNF, which means there has to be a 40 point uh, extra move for the next cross to go up. Okay, the next cross, if you want to go, only when you go up by 40 points, the next cross comes up. And there has to be an 80 point minimum fall for the for any of the zeros to be shown. So therefore the small moves will not be shown. Okay, so that's why the point and figure is a very good chart. But it's a useful chart. It's good to be aware of this. So I'll leave you guys to play around with this and understand the chart yourself. I'm not going to go into the details of it. Okay, because we have to cover so many other things. But it's a useful chart. I think as a part of your own coverage, you should learn about how to use point and figure charts because it gives you a picture about the broad trend. Okay, it gives you a big picture view. All right. So these are the main types of charts. As you can see, there are many other types of charts. Okay, Heiken Ashi and uh, Renko charts. These are also used in in foreign exchange. In many other uh, markets, in, in financial markets, people also use these other charts, Heiken Ashi and Renko charts. Okay, so you can learn about these charts on your own. But as you can see, there are many types of charts. Okay, so and if you go to the Oanda uh, application, uh, you'll see that they have all, they also have many other types of charts. So, but these are the main charts. If you know these charts, you're more or less okay with financial markets. Markets, line charts bar charts two types okay candle charts point and figure okay and you should also be aware that Heiken Ashi and um, Renko charts are also used okay these are all Japanese the candlesticks charts also come from Japan okay and uh, these charts Heiken Ashi uh, Renko these are all Japanese charts because in Japan they used to have uh, trading in rice futures many years ago okay I mean uh, literally I don't know maybe thousands of years ago they had they had uh, you know uh, trading in rice futures in Japan okay so uh, so that's where when these rice futures traders used to trade they used to chart using these types of techniques so that's where we have these techniques from okay candlestick charts Heiken Ashi Renko etc okay so there's actually a book called Japanese candlestick charting techniques and the expression that uh, Mehak was using which is doji doji is one type of pattern in candlesticks okay there are various types of candlestick patterns if you look on Oanda you will see um, uh, the uh, ch candlesticks pat uh, patterns also are, there, there's actually a AI type of application that tries to detect candlestick patterns okay so um, th those are those are that's a, that's a subject by itself there's a book on candlestick uh, charting techniques okay so there are different types of patterns so you can look at that and that's one area if you become a pure technician there are some people who trade just using candlestick charts okay they don't use their pure technicians number one so first of all people who use technical analysis only they're called pure technicians okay in the financial markets and some of these people are uh, they are within that they only use candlestick charts okay so that's also a legitimate way to uh, approach the market okay so we've covered this now we've covered plot type okay the fourth type is this concept of granularity which we have already touched upon okay but we need to be aware of this word granularity okay so uh, this is something that we have to understand okay so we'll use what is meant by gra granularity comes from grain okay so grain means very small okay so granularity so if we say that something is highly granular okay so if we say that somebody made a highly granular presentation on this particular phenomenon which means he went into great detail okay highly granular means the going deep i mean with a very high zoom okay so highly granular therefore showing a great deal of the uh, the my, uh, minute details all right so the main point is this is all about the granularity so when i change from daily and i go to 15 minutes okay I am changing the granularity. Obviously, these things cannot uh, be. Uh, first, I should change the plot type. Let me just change it to candles. Okay. And then I go to, uh, let's say, I'm going from daily to 15 minutes. Okay. So I'm changing the granularity. All this is all granularity. Okay. So granularity is the uh, is the variable. And then when I set it to 15 minutes, this variable takes a value of 15 minutes. So in terms of the system design, the system sees the granularity as a variable. And when the user chooses 15 minutes, the user is assigning 
15 as 15 minutes as the value for the granularity for that variable right okay so every variable has to be given some specific value so in this case you have chosen 15 minutes as your granularity okay so um, the main thing to understand is that uh, is is 15 minutes in in some sense I have actually increased it uh, I have uh, you know sort of decreased the snapshot frequency or oh, sorry I have increased the snapshot frequency okay because from day I've gone to uh, 15 minutes okay so understand this that the 15 minutes just and whenever you look at the granularity the granularity basically gives you the snapshot frequency whatever the value of the uh, granularity is like you're taking a picture every 15 minutes okay so earlier you were taking a picture only every one day earlier you were taking a picture only one day now you're taking a picture every 15 minutes so that is what is meant by snapshot frequency the granularity is equal to the snapshot frequency but the point to understand is that the period technically the period one day period is higher than 15 minutes is that clear okay but when we go from one day to uh, when or when we have gone from 15 minutes to one day have i increased the granularity or decreased the decrease i have decreased the granularity kind of zoomed out okay so it's not so granular anymore but i've actually increased the period okay so the period and the granularity are inversely related is this clear okay so we try to write this here also okay okay so granularity is uh, proportional to frequency of data capture which is our snapshot frequency okay frequency of data capture but you should also we should also write this here that um, yeah So we should write that it is inversely proportional to to period. Okay. Okay. The main thing to understand is that when you are going from a five fifteen minute chart to a daily chart, you are increasing or decreasing the granularity. One when I'm going from 15 to daily, I am increasing or decreasing. I'm decreasing the granularity. Okay, so conversely, when I'm going from daily to uh, six one hour, I am increasing the granularity is increasing. Okay, is that clear? That's, these are just some terms that you have to be familiar with. And once again, just revise these and understand it clearly, so that once you remember, once you understand the concept, you no longer have. So the related terms are frequency of data capture or, or, or snapshot frequency okay it's the same as the uh, as the granularity okay now one thing to understand obviously is that you have to understand you have to always be aware of the technology aspect especially in financial markets very intimately connected to technology we need to have a good understanding of software design okay so all these aspects of software design now typically if you see now when the software has been designed okay the software will typically be designed you understand the record concept each of these is a record 27 june nine o'clock this is the ali data chart 27 june one o'clock nine o'clock is a record then i know we're not able to go from nine to ten but um, obviously with after nine is ten so 27 june uh, 3rd of july 1900 is a record 3rd of july 2100 is a record every hour data every hour's data is a record and if you are plotting a bar chart that means if you are plotting an open high low close bar means there are four pieces of information okay so in that particular uh, record there will be a field okay you understand concept of we covered it earlier in databases right that you have records and fields what you haven't been taught about databases no okay let me see where we have uh, we should cover this a little bit we'll put it back into your calc file it's not that complicated it's very simple okay now what we can write is the timestamp okay first is the timestamp 
if you are plotting this kind of database okay this is the timestamp okay this is the timestamp 27 june 1900 this is the timestamp this is clear okay then obviously you have the variable that is already de uh, declared we have the variable as euro sterling fx okay now we have open open high low close okay so then what we'll have is we'll have 29 july whatever okay so now we have all these pieces of information okay now this of course we can call it whatever it is okay so these are all my uh, this is like my 29 july 9 o'clock then 29 july 10 o'clock 29 July 11 o'clock, 29 July 12 o'clock, so on and so forth. Are you following? Yes. Timestamp. Okay, so I'm looking at an hourly database, okay, which captures open, high, low, close data. All right. So these are all the figures that I have. What is the timestamp? Okay. And then we have this is like 29 July 9 o'clock, 29 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3rd o'clock. This is clear. Everyone is following. Okay. So this, so here you have to write 29 July 10 o'clock, 29 July 11 o'clock. Okay. Then whatever the open, high, low, close figure is for that period that you are supposed to capture, whatever this fig these figures are for that 29 July 10 o'clock for that one hour period, you should have monitored what was the open, what was the high, what was the low, what was the close. This is clear. Yes. Okay. So then you will put in some numbers there. Okay. So essentially here you have a database, okay, and then you all call it a Euro Sterling. This is the label that you have, which is the Euro Sterling FX. Okay, if you write it like this, it is obviously Euro Sterling because uh, it's Euro Sterling FX. Okay, so now this is just the, uh, the label for which uh, this is essentially your database. Okay, if you have only eight, if you have only eight hours of data. Okay, so this is your database. Okay, so these are all the records in the database. This one to eight, it has eight records. You have not been taught all this stuff before. Okay, so you need to have a basic understanding of databases in, in, in finance because you have to be very uh, comfortable with technology. Okay, you have to have a very good understanding of technology because you are going to be using in any finance application, you'll be using a lot of software. You need to have some basic idea of uh, how software is designed what are databases some basic concept we are not expecting you to be a programmer okay so this is a concept this is a simple concept of a database a crude example a very simple example right okay so any other thing i can also write okay i can write yash then here i can write sex male here i can write kushbu i can write sex female i can write height here i can write whether wears glasses or not then what was the uh, stream does he come from bba does he come from does she come from bcom <coughs> That would also be a database, right? So this is a database, simple database, eight hours of data. So these are the records. These things are the records. Okay. So uh, I'm not. Uh, these are called records. These are your records. Each of these are the records. Uh, these, each of these is a record. Okay. So you have eight records in this database. Is this clear? And these are actually called the fields field as in football field okay this is clear so each record has how many fields four four five fields because timestamp is also a field no? you have to plot it accordingly okay and remember because time series data you're plotting a time series data chart you can't just plot one and then plot six because remember what we said in time series data that the order of observations is relevant yes. so you can't plot our six data after our one data yes. whereas in cross-sectional data it doesn't matter in cross-sectional data it doesn't matter what is the order in which you plot okay as long as you have only one period okay and you have multiple variables are you following this yes. is clear so this is an example a simple example so any other complex database will at least have these properties okay now i don't know what are the developments in database software and all that but this is the basics of a database that you have records and fields okay so every record will have multiple fields okay so as i give you another example of it you can have the students as a database okay. so okay now what was i saying why did i get into the discussion of databases okay 
yeah the 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 concept of the data range and what was i talking about what is the last one we were talking about granularity okay so the point i was trying to ex em emphasize is this point okay that since most software is programmed to display a fixed maximum number of records okay so because software will have a capacity okay to display only a maximum number of records now you, that's why i need to teach you the concept of records okay so this now here in this database there are only eight records okay now the so software is always programmed in such a way that it can only show you a maximum number of records all right so now if you change where am i here okay so now when i'm showing 15 minutes of data okay i have a certain amount of i'm showing one hour of data each okay so it's a one hour data chart my um, my uh, data ranges from 24th april let's say roughly from 24th april to um, today obviously everything is today these are all live charts from 24th april to today all right this is my data range okay and my granularity is one hour but the point is that suppose that suppose we don't know now suppose here there are say uh, 100,000 records okay now this is my maximum zoom out view okay this is my maximum zoom out view so in that maximum zoom out view there will be a maximum number of records that the system will display okay that the charting system will display so now suppose there are 100,000 records in this view okay now if I uh, you notice that the, this data range starts from 24th April now if I increase the granularity okay if I go to one minute what will happen to my data range maybe I shouldn't have done it earlier I should have clicked it uh, what will happen to my data range I just went from um, I told you that the system has a constraint that it can only show 100,000 records okay and when I was showing hourly data it was showing me uh, the data range was starting from 24th April now I have gone from hourly data to one minute data now what will happen to my data range will it shrink or it will increase it will shrink because for same one hour of data that's all very simple so you guys are very smart you already understood this yes. enough. but I just want to make sure these are everything that is all. what has happened to my data range now it's starting from 5th August okay this is still the full display so maybe this is very simple you guys are very smart I need to show you this but you need to have I just thought we should discuss this so that you have a good understanding of now you also learned about databases at least yeah. okay so you have you have to have a good understanding of software how software is designed okay database software because even when you do stock screeners later on stock screeners are also working with databases okay so therefore it's good to have an understanding of what it, how a database is basically structured okay so uh, so now you can see all we are trying to say here is this very simple thing which is that uh, when you increase the granularity you will automatically decrease the data range yes, yes sir. you're clear yes sir. okay just think about it for a moment because your number of records are fixed maximum zoom out display the number of records is fixed which is the actual constraint of any software now it may be 1000 records in one software in a better piece of software maybe 5 million records but there will be some fixed number when the software is designed and you can't keep changing that number okay so therefore whenever you increase the granularity the uh, data range is going to shrink okay that's all we are trying to show you okay now we come to kind of once again to the question of what uh, Parul was talking about that we want to be able we want to be so familiar with charts is this discussion too basic what is it very obvious or too basic or are you guys learning some you feel like you're learning something okay good because it, I have to make sure that all the basics the fundamentals are very clear so that later on you can start running and jumping on your own you know hop step and jump all that stuff you can do on your own okay so now if you look at an example here okay as we said um, one day if we look at a daily chart on uh, euro sterling so what I want to just show you clearly is if I see a chart like this what do I say I just want you guys to be so used to it that you can just do it mechanically in your head automatically okay that when this is happening what is happening the base asset is appreciating or depreciating is my question clear when the chart is going up the chart is going up everyone can see that okay I deliberately 
played with the data range to show you a clear case where the chart is going up okay now uh, in the when the chart is going up we can evolve a mechanical rule once you understand it conceptually then you can just kind of memorize it okay but first you have to make sure you understand it conceptually that when the chart is going up the base asset is appreciating or depreciating appreciating, appreciating with an a is this clear everybody right so when you're appreciating you get an a and when you're depreciating you get a d okay so now is this clear so this is one mechanical rule that you should have in your head that whenever you see now then you should also be able to make uh, certain other inferences okay now what if the base asset is appreciating okay now what is happening is the euro strengthening or getting weaker strengthening. euro strengthening okay how do you derive that the rule that you have is when the and the and the logic for this rule is if you ever forget it that you see the scale on the right hand side okay when the chart is going up what is happening that compared to the beginning of the chart when the base asset was buying only 85 only 0 0.85 0 0.85 units of the terms asset now the base asset is able to buy 0.92 units of the terms asset so this is how you remember it logically if you ever forget just look look at any chart you can always pull up a chart okay so now the base asset is commanding 0.92 units of the terms asset so the base asset is much stronger now so therefore when the chart is going up that means that the base asset is appreciating okay now i asked you a further question so all these things you should be once you have understood the concept and done the practice for a few times okay then you should just be able to instantly uh, form the conclusions okay so when this chart is going up okay because as a market professional you have to you don't have time to go through all these baby steps every day you have to go through the baby steps when you're learning understand the logic internalize it so as a market professional your brain in an instant will see that it's appreciating okay so here the euro is getting stronger or weaker stronger. stronger okay and what is the logic for that the base asset is appreciating you know and the base asset in this case is the euro so therefore the euro is getting stronger okay and once again remember also never forget the terms asset okay because you see when people in the market the, i've asked you to watch business tv when you see the experts talking on tv they talk in very general terms and very loose terms okay you should not talk like that so just the euro is appreciating is not a complete statement you have to say the euro is appreciating against the sterling okay and even then it's not a complete statement why let's look at this if i just say the euro is appreciating against the sterling okay let's look at now a different currency market okay let's look at uh, this is not a good example because it's going continuously down i think we try to uh, pull up uh, something else uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to load okay and we'll try to reload this the point is that so, so the point i'm trying to illustrate here is the next point that we are covering okay so we already covered when a chart is appreciating rising base asset is appreciating terms asset is depreciating vice versa okay now when you are talking about a chart okay you have to specify all the four parameters okay this is what i mean by not talking loosely when you say i have a chart with you have to say i have a chart of euro sterling fx uh if the data range is january to march 2017 okay you have specified the data range it is a candlestick chart okay and uh it, it is a period it's a it's a the granularity is daily okay. have we covered everything we have covered granularity we have covered the plot type we have covered the market we have covered the data range okay only then is the statement complete okay and when you are talking about um, the other part i wanted to um, yeah when you are talking about a market having gone up and down okay the reference chart now very often you will find that people say that uh, a dollar is appreciating okay now dollar is appreciating the first of all is not a clear statement because is it appreciating as the yen or against the australian dollar or against the uh, kiwi dollar okay so that you have to specify against what okay and not only that the data range is very important okay the point i'm trying to illustrate here is that if you change the data range the picture might change okay 
so I hope this has loaded yeah we are our euro chart has loaded okay so what I can show you here is now look at this okay when you look at this chart okay now this is a bit uh, interesting type of display I'm going to go through this display and give you a picture of this display you should understand how this display is constructed now in an ideal setting okay you can set up this display for yourself uh, but you won't get indian equities on it but you should understand now our, our uh, general principles that we are learning about finance and financial markets we have to go a little bit beyond the indian markets and your current situation okay but understand how ideally charting should be done okay because we are spending a lot of time learning about technicals but it's a very useful uh, 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 set of techniques okay so this is the ideal charting uh, perspective from my point of view now understand how this thing is this is like a palette type of display okay you know like you have a color palette you have a palette on which you have all these different colors and you start painting from it okay so it's like a palette kind of display and you see what is being what is going on here okay all of these see if i click here it's euro click here it's euro notice what is happening here and notice this okay and these these are all this is my what is it granularity okay the one week and all that is the granularity this is the market and this is the plot type okay so only thing that we have not talked about is data range okay so essentially what you will see here what I've done is in this particular display try to understand the display okay first I started with monthly so because we read from left to right okay uh, since we are not reading Urdu we are read normally we read from left to right okay so uh, we are reading from left to right and then from top to bottom okay all right so uh, we are going from here I start here notice what my granularity is I'm going to click on each of the boxes notice something that the market is not changing okay the market is not changing what is my granularity here monthly okay here weekly market never changes plot type never changes okay it's weekly here then next daily okay one day next is eight hours okay then four hours, four hours then one hour then 15 minutes and then this is five minutes it's actually on this system you can actually trade with from the chart okay this is like a chart trading facility but I want to just get rid of this right now uh, click something I just want okay cancel it okay all right okay let's go back to this all right so have you followed the scheme of the chart how this is laid out yes. you understood the scheme of the chart I have the same market the same plot type then just because we want to go from left to right and right, uh, top to bottom the way we normally uh, follow stuff okay uh, so here I started with the highest uh, uh, periodicity okay so the lowest granularity and as I go from left to right and top to bottom the granularity keeps increasing are you following that okay so as the granularity increases uh, what will happen to the data range as the granularity keeps increasing the data range will decrease on each chart as you can see here this chart starts all the in all the charts these are all live charts you can see the figure the figure is the same so the last the end of the data range is always the current period okay so we don't have to worry about that but in practice when you're talking about the data range you should also mention the current period I mean the end date to be very uh, strict and to be methodical you should mention the end date but so what are we talking about here here the uh, the start of the data range is around uh, 2002 June of 2002 can you see that yes. starting in June of 2002 now here I could yeah it's already at maximum zoom out what is the data range here 2014 the moment I go from monthly to weekly my data range is the starting of my data range has shrunk from 2002 to 2014 
so obviously the radar range is shorter now okay so essentially what this chart so this is the pain point once again you see the illustration of that principle as the granularity increases the data range will shrink okay so you can see this in any piece of software okay now what is happening here what i'm trying to do here is essentially this now i'm trying to show you this principle that when you're talking about charts don't talk loosely but people keep saying dollar is appreciating this that it's not complete first of all the dollar against what okay dollar maybe the dollar may be appreciating against the canadian dollar but depreciating against the euro you don't know so you have to make when you say when you make a statement you have to make it as a general statement i mean you have to make it very specific okay all right so uh, you have when you're talking about uh, charts going up and down and then you have to mention ideally all now the other important thing is especially this when you are talking about the importance of the data range okay what i'm trying to show you is that when you just say the dollar is strengthening against the even if you say against the yen the dollar is strengthening okay or do, the dollar has appreciated against the yen if you make a statement like this even this statement is not complete because you have not specified the data range look at this now if i show you this this chart this is the euro now i look i look at this chart and i say the euro is depreciating is that statement correct when i'm on this chart i say that the euro is depreciating against the US, uh, usd is that a statement is that statement correct with reference to this chart yes, now don't look at anything else just look at this chart is that statement correct with respect to this chart this is correct now this chart essentially differs from the other charts only in terms of the granularity and the data range okay so mainly we are trying to emphasize here the importance of the data range whenever you are making a statement as to whether something is appreciating or depreciating people often say that the, that the euro is appreciating or the dollar is appreciating or the dollar has appreciated but they don't mention the data range they never mention the data range i mean it is almost guaranteed when you look at people talking on tv they almost never mention the data range okay but the statement doesn't have any because now the same thing the current period is the same all the time it's always the current period okay now uh, uh, the the end of the data range is the same now if i look at this chart i can say the euro has been depreciating against the dollar now can i just focus you on only this chart forget about all the other charts now can i just look at this chart and say that the euro is appreciating against the dollar yes that statement is also true yes, yes ganotra is not convinced are you convinced okay so i look at only this chart now i say that the euro is appreciating against the dollar so you see why that statement is a problem if you don't mention the data range because if you change and here i'm not making stuff up to make, give you this example it's real stuff okay these are all real plots okay so can you see why that if you don't mention the data range then it's a problem you have i mean your statement is not complete or it's not specific okay because uh, you know i don't know what data range are you referring to okay when you say the dollar has been appreciating against the yen over what period okay at least the data range should be mentioned okay granularity and plot type uh, are not so important in this kind of a context but the data range is very important is this clear okay that's all that we are talking about here that the importance of the data range should not be lost sight of okay this is all we are saying here what i showed you just now is nothing but this okay so obviously a picture speaks a thousand words so you can understand it that the charts when you have when you have different data ranges you can have a different assessment of whether the base asset is appreciating or depreciating which i just showed you in the case of the euro okay all right okay now the importance of charts as i said here okay why even if you eventually decide that you are going to go in for a uh, be you want to be a fundamental analyst okay Uh, and fundamental analysis is a more politically correct uh, uh, you know position okay so saying to the market that i practice technical analysis is still not politically correct okay so people like to pretend that we don't use technical even when they actually use it they try to say that uh, we don't use technicals we use fundamentals okay because fundamental seems more logical you see how technical analysis to some extent is a little bit problematic it seems a little like voodoo because i'm just telling you just surf the waves okay and just take a view and look at the market price patterns and take a view do you understand why people might not want to say to the outside world that this is how we are trading you you understand what i'm getting at okay although nobody says that about surfers nobody looks at a champion surfer and says hey he doesn't have a phd in physics take away his medal nobody says that okay 
but exact what you are doing is actually exactly the same as what a surfer is doing a surfer has no clue about physics but he is able to surf well okay so you can do the exact same thing as you would probably be finding out in your trading project that at the end of the day if you are able to call the waves if you are able to call which way the market is going okay and make money does it really matter whether you knew what why it went up or why it went down does it matter no doesn't matter right if you develop a flair for making money that way it doesn't really matter in the in the in a hard nosed business sense but people are much more complicated than that they want to appear to be rational okay they want to appear to be rational reasonable people who are trading based on reasons and analysis and all that so that's why it's not politically correct to say that you're practicing technical analysis people like to say but it's a very useful technique and it's the most important thing to me is that it offers a very objective way to limit your losses which i think is basically the heart of everything in the in the markets whether you're using if you if you are poor risk management even as a fundamental trader you will not uh, survive okay now let me show you one other way of do doing this okay uh, yes yeah so uh, as of now what happens is that we look at the upward trend mm -hmm. and we look uh, at the latest news for a particular stock and then we try to predict whether it, it will go up or go down so that is what so how long does it actually take to understand fundamental analysis see first of all fundamental analysis is not a is not a holy grail in the sense that this is just because you understand fundamental analysis and you're good at applying it in a textbook fashion okay that doesn't mean that your view will be correct so that's why i say that finance is not like engineering okay so in engineering if i learn how to design a jet engine okay and i follow and i've learned it thoroughly and i follow the all the instructions and i follow all the principles then my jet engine has to work there is no uncertainty about it okay if i put in the right fuel and everything my design specifications are correct and then it has to work and it will work every time okay so are you following what i'm saying so this is the difference between uh, science and in art science and engineering and finance and economics okay although in finance there is a very bad practice that happens in academia and a lot of the you know the courses and all that you look at that there is a try there is an attempt to portray finance as something like you have expression like financial engineering okay these are very dishonest uh, efforts according to me because they give students because students don't know right so there we are just uh, giving students a false sense of security the first thing you have to understand is finance is not engineering so even if you know and the first answer to your question is how long does it take to understand fundamental analysis it could be years because you keep getting better okay you keep getting better but even the best fundamental analyst he is hardly right maybe 50% of the time i mean if he is lucky 50 60% of the time he should consider himself i mean if he is right he should consider himself lucky so that's the difference between engineering and finance and economics okay finance and economics is the same financial uh, market uh, you know asset prices like what's going to happen to the euro sterling who knows okay and there's really no way of knowing so the reason i say all these financial engineering and these kinds of courses which are designed i think they are very dishonest and they do students a great disservice because they give students the impression that finance is somehow like engineering it's not okay engineering is a totally different league okay as i said you design a jet engine okay put in the right fuel it has to work every time if it's not working means there's some problem in your design or there's a faulty part obviously if you have a part which doesn't have the right tensile strength then the thing might not work but that's not the fault of the physics or the science okay is everyone understanding is everyone yes. clear about that okay sir yeah one sec yeah what happened Gar garvid is getting restless yes. garvid always gets restless to the end of the class <laughs> that is the indication that you know uh, the yeah. class is about yeah. time is almost over yes what is the question sir, the rise and fall you should the price yeah either due to the demand or supply force or any other economic condition there should be some way to evaluate this to find out whether or not that you can increase the probability of our prediction yeah so no essentially what you are getting at once again is you are getting at the uh, you are still getting at the uh, let me just briefly cover something here okay which i need to tell what, you guys no no i understood what you are saying what you are essentially saying is understand what garv uh, what uh, chug is saying okay what he is trying to do is he is essentially making a case for fundamental analysis yeah. he is essentially saying that there should be some reason why the market is moving up or down okay so the first thing i would say it's a very important question okay and it's a natural question the other thing that i would tell you to remember it very clearly like hammer it into your head with a big nail okay which is that 
although the one of the things you'll notice in the market is people keep talking about why the market has gone up or down okay in practice it is not possible from a side from in a scientific sense to know why the market has gone up or down okay so you should operate at two levels first is you should understand the market chatter and you should understand what people are saying okay the chinese currency has gone through the seven barrier the trade wars are escalating therefore uh, the outlook for the global economy is gloomy therefore the stock market is going down okay so you should understand that as well you should be aware of that that this is what people in the market are saying uh, about why uh, when when they uh, when they talk about why the market is falling okay are you understanding i think i'm answering your question to some extent okay so you should understand that but at a more important fundamental level you should be aware that this is all garbage okay that you should know that it is not possible to know why the market is going up or down you should not fool yourself at that level and this is something which nobody else will tell you so it's important that i tell you this you should understand what i mean by knowing is if i take a go if i go to a chemistry lab i put water in a beaker and i start heating the beaker and the water starts boiling i know that the water is only boiling because i am applying heat to the beaker in that sense it is not possible to know why the market is going up or down and it will never be possible anybody who tells you otherwise is either an idiot or is dishonest okay so understand this very clearly okay if you learn one thing in finance this is one important thing you should learn that you operate at two levels understand what the market chatter is you should not be unaware of that you should know that the chinese currency has broken seven okay this is the big news in the international market but you should also know that this is all garbage that actually you can never really figure out why the market is moving the way it's doing it is moving it's irrational the market is not rational this is an essential reality you are making a case for the rationality of markets it's totally understandable but my response to you is that uh, that's not actually correct so maybe as you practice more and more you do your fundamental analysis more and more and try to understand and, and watch how the market reacts that's the purpose of all these projects to make you do this fundamental analysis follow the news flow see how the market is reacting and then ask yourself do you think the market is really rational like one of my students at Amity Gaziabad after his project came and told me that I have decided, realized that the market doesn't make any sense. So I said this is a very, this is a very good understanding that you arrived at. If, because you need, it's not sufficient for me to tell you. You have to understand it deep inside yourself. Okay. So that's what I mean by, okay. So now we will not hold Garvid back any longer. Okay. Just one brief, uh, one, I'll just take two minutes. Okay. The, some people have a problem with the market is dropping. The market is dropping. So you guys have a problem. You're not able to uh, trade. Okay. Because most of the short stocks cannot be sold short because of lack of shorting, shorting, uh, shortable stock. But this is the challenge. Okay. One, understand one sec, guys. If you go into an asset management situation, most of the in India you can't short short sell stocks effectively. Legally you can, but effectively you can't because there's no supply. Okay, so you are going to face this problem which every asset manager faces. You are effectively operating as a long only asset manager. Market is going up, but look at TCS. TCS is going down. Some other Infosys also was I think going up. So you have to go through those 50 stocks and find stocks that are going up even when the market is going down. This is what stock picking is. That being able to detect good stocks in a in a down market. Is this clear to everyone? This is your challenge. So now you're finding out through the project some of the real challenges that people in industry face. Okay, the same thing that is being faced by people in managing HDFC mutual fund. They have the same problem. The market is going down, but some stocks are. How do I buy the stocks? How do I find the stocks that are going to go up? Okay, clear. All right. Just like. Garvid is looking for which period, where do I find a class where the class is about to end?